Hello everybody, welcome to King Country Salvage again, and here we go, something that is definitely salvage. I guess it's his most famous baby, this is the Mini, 10 foot from end to end. This is the Mini City, which was meant it was quite posh, and it was actually a Kiwi new one, 1981 apparently. Now this one is uh, past its first flush of youth, somewhat. People keep telling me that things are restorable here. This isn't restorable by the hand of God. We will show you some of the holes and rust in it in a minute. And luckily today, we've actually got somebody here who knows a whole lot more about minis than me. Hello, Don. Uh, what a tad, I don't know if I know more than you, but I, know I would a think bit. you probably do. Yeah, this so, one's a lightweight mini because about 100 kg of it has just <laughs> evaporated, hasn't it? It's, yeah, it was parked up when nearly new, believe it or not. So this car was off the records before 1986. Yeah. So it's actually been there, parked ever since. As the, the rust on it is rust that's not road rust. It's, yeah. yeah, it's obviously just sitting rust. It's, it's not road film rust. It's a bit of a shame because you can tell it's the sort of car that when it did get parked up, it would have been quite intact and, and, and in quite good condition, but... Uh, everything's there. Yeah, everything's there, but uh, time has not been kind, nor the New Zealand climate. Now, it was parked in the scrapyard forever and ever and ever, and we think, see the front guard on this, or the front wing, or whatever you, have, what you want to do, front fender, yeah. it's made out of uh, Bondo, or bog, <laughs> or fiberglass, or filler, yeah. or whichever way you want to call it, because yeah. that's the only reason it hasn't rusted all the way through. Yeah, well, that's but, right, that's what's still holding it together, the bog that remains. It had, a new it had an accident when it was nearly new. As you can see, there's fist size holes in this one. The door doesn't come off, which is amazing. And that's a GT steering wheel, eh, Rob? Yep. yep. Yeah, that was very common on the uh, Austin 1300 GT, so I'd say that's where that's come from. And this is like, a, this is the upscale interior, isn't it? Because yep. this was the last set of them. Yep, the, the last of the New Zealand assembled minis had the Clubman style dash in front of the steering wheel. Which is this one, eh? Yep. Did they actually just, was this just a... Uh, New Zealand one or was it a British version it, as well? It probably, we, we seem to copy everything that the Brits did so, uh, but yeah from around about 1980 or so I do remember the last of the round nose minis had the dash configuration like that. It's lovely isn't it? There was yeah. just, they, they obviously there was H4 lights on this so this was a sporty yep. driver. Yep. Now here's the bit which we really liked, we, I'm going to knock and lie, it took me a little while to open the boot so we opened it yeah. before. And this is the spare wheel delete. Yep. It's fallen through the hole and disappeared, rolled yeah. away. It's actually here, I've got it, just in case. <laughs> and you can see the subframes got torn quite badly from where they yeah. actually tried to move it. Most of the car just fell apart when it was hit. And this one, it's got something on it which I always really like. It's the lead model rear lights. Yep, it's got the uh, Mark IV uh, tail lights. And one thing that's, overriders. Uh, one thing that's caught my mind, those overriders aren't original. They are, no. off, they are off a Super Deluxe or a Cooper from way back in the day, you know, a Mark One. Yeah, and mm. they're, really, they're always like those. Yeah. Like, I mean, they're useless as bumper protectors, really. They, they all are. had them in France. Yeah. Every one of these in Paris I ever saw had yeah. these bumper protectors. And they did uh, it in Italy as well, slightly bigger version. Well, it's because they parked by touch. Yeah. That's a true story, <laughs> they parked by touch. Yeah. So it stopped them riding up into the, into the headlights, but of that course... It didn't weigh anything. And this was, of course, one of the most Mini's most controversial and safety Absolutely. features. So when you roll a Mini, what you generally do if you get it wrong, this is sitting proud of the body, as you can see here. And this, oh, well, you'll take my word for it, this is the fuel filler. And what it does is it sits proud of the body. So if you roll a Mini, you clean this, whoop, yep. straight off. Yep. And of course, with a Mini, the battery used to sit in the back too, and it wasn't sort of exactly a good look. Yeah, so basically it would throw all of its fuel. If you were upside down, the fuel was coming out, all of it. And that was one of the things that was, it was heavily criticised for. Now this one is the A+, so we try and attempt to open the bonnet. This is how you do it. You leave the reinforcing behind, see? None of us have ever seen this before. <laughs> None of us. So we we, we pre-opened it. This X section here corresponds to this X section yeah. here, and they never ever come off. Like it's never, it's never seen. Yeah, but look, still attached to the engine. So we can still lift it here to show and you the bonnet. Stay. Look, it's there too. Oh yeah, just to get. Oh well, perfect. So in she goes. In she goes there. There we go. Yeah. Perfect. So that's what you're now left with. So this is basically an A plus, right? Now, what was the difference with an A plus? Well, the... Um, Better oil sealant, I seem to remember. Yeah, the timing uh, chain cover was vastly different. And really, the, the A-plus a motor, it was, it was strengthened in many ways. Take this away from you, sir. It was uh, also then used in the Allegro. Yep. Famously, the Allegro, yep. which was possibly one of the most unreliable cars ever known to mankind. Yeah, and the Metro. And the Metro, which was actually a pretty good version of a yeah, Mini yeah. in the 80s, but um, nobody ever really liked them until now. Because mm. the Anglers... Styling was terrible. In fact, the angular styling was so bad 
that they kept the Mini running as well because they weren't sure that anyone was going to buy yeah, it. Yeah. But they did. They sold millions of Metros. I think Princess Di, when uh, Charlie was going out with her, um, she had a Metro, didn't she? Princess and... Di's first car. Yeah, so yeah, it, yeah. It's officially I... by royal appointment. <laughs> yeah, but... I think that helped sales considerably back in the day. Yeah, and these the good thing with these is they used to have scroll seals on them, wouldn't they? Mm. Uh, and these were actually rubber seals, so yeah. they leak less oil. Yeah. So if you've ever owned a British car, yeah. they leave horsepower sweat or oil stains on lots of things but these ones were actually remarkably oil tight in fact this one's probably remarkably tight anyway but we're going to try and turn it over yeah, and see yeah. if it's doable this still will be rebuilt this engine hard to believe but true and um the minis when they first built them so this was great i mean they came out in 59 yes and alex Sigonis didn't want to race them but john cooper did didn't he correct so he thought saw this saw a wheel at each corner which i mean it literally is a 10 foot long Wheel in each corner, front wheel drive, lovely balance. I mean, they're amazing. We could, we could talk to a man that races one, and he can yeah. probably tell you a bit more about one, right? Yep. Yeah. But um, John there's Cooper, a New Zealand connection there too, because what's not commonly known is when John Cooper was given the job of uh, making the first Mini Cooper, he of course in his Cooper F1 team there was Jack Rabin yeah. and Bruce McLaren. Yeah. So they put a lot of their own work into the sorting as well back in the day. Did Sorry. a lot of the test driving and made a lot of recommendations to John Cooper. So, yeah, there, there was a little bit of a New Zealand and an Australian uh, contribution towards the whole package. Yeah, and actually, they're, they're, I mean, they were amazing. These, these were giant killers. They were racing against Ford Galaxies with seven-litre engines. And they literally, if you ever get the chance to watch them racing, the historic yeah. tin top, watching a Galaxy fight up with a Mini is the most amazing <laughs> sight that you will ever see. Yeah. You know? And it, it really, they when they released these in '59, they never thought they would sell that many of them. No, it, they uh, at first they were slow to sell, and uh, BMC were quite worried. Beyond, yeah, really, they were, but, and they lost money on every car, didn't they? The first time. No, that, that's a little bit of a miscon. Oh damn! Yeah, I was going to tell is. a great story. Yeah, was I've wrong, heard then. all sorts of stories about how they lost five quid per car and all that, but it's yeah. not quite true. And I think re one of the reasons why the bookwork was sort of um, smudged a bit was they were propping up other projects like the 1100, the ADO 16 project, these yeah. are ADO 15. Yeah. So they sort of stole profits off the Mini to sort of prop up all their other ventures. So really the Mini, as a standalone, was quite okay financially. The, the funny joke about, well they actually made a lot of money off the parts. Yeah. Parts was the, ma the major thing they sold, because they sold so many Minis that the parts were actually one of their biggest incomes. Yeah, and then guys like Paddy Hopkirk, of course, did really well out of the go faster parts. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, all of the Speedwell, mm -hmm. and there were heaps of Radford, even yep. made, Radford made yep. uh, the, the posh Minis. Yeah. We should talk about this, they said not want a better Mini, <laughs> when we look at it a nice one. But, the famous story was that, well, there's two famous stories. The, my my fav, favourite one is the one that the uh, there was a friend of Lord Stokes at the time who uh, run BMC, right? And Lord Stokes, they, one of his friends said, could you get me one of the new minis? He said, well, yes, we could probably do that for you. He said, could you do me a, a at-cost price? And the at-cost price was five pounds more than the actual <laughs> price of a mini in the showroom. <laughs> And the other one is when the most famous thing you'll ever see is the Italian job. Yeah. I mean, the Italian job blew yeah. mini sales completely yeah. through the roof yeah. again. Yeah. So in 59, they were quite popular. By yeah. 67, all the hippies were driving them and they yeah. were massive. By 69, sales were starting to slack off a little. Yeah. And the Italian job came out and sent it yeah. all to orbit. Yeah. And in 1971, that was the year they made the most minis. No way. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's an amazing fact. So but, by then, they were into Mark threes. Wow. Mm. And the Italian job itself, when yeah. they filmed it, so they, they went up, uh, Pete and Collinsford, I think it was, was the director. And who, I can't remember who was the, the, the producer. Anyway, they went up to, um, they went up to like BMC and they said, hey, we're going to do a film, we're going to use minis. And they were like, yes, that's great. Because Fiat told them they, if, they, if they used a 500, they would supply them all the cars, the factory, everything. British Motor Corporation, you can have four minis at cost. Yeah. And that was all they give them was four minis at cost. Also, to wrecked. imagine trying to get up to the sort of antics that uh, they did an Italian job in Fiat Bambinas. Oh, it? they would have given them the Abarth. I mean, Fiat still supported them. Like, yeah. Every other car in the yeah. movie is a Fiat, which yeah. is incredible because they robbed Italy. But it would have been cute and funny and all of that, but oh, I wouldn't have liked to have been the stunt driver and the Bambinas doing uh, what they did. 50 yeah. miles an hour, and those were flat out, and I was good. But yeah, so these, these are obviously great. And obviously, you can tell that both of us love minis. And this one's going to be parted out to its maximum to go to you know a good home parts yeah. and at least we've saved it for posterity yeah. it's, it's been lost dog isn't it yeah it's been sat in a, in, a, in a shed for 30 years but we can't even picking this car up is tricky i might pick it up and show you the underside of it if i get the chance because it's it's actually dangerous to pick it up it's that falling apart 
But okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that and a little lesson on minis, and we'll bring you another one with a much nicer mini some other time later. Thanks. Bye.